Hey, how's it going, everyone? It's your host, Chris, at Hurtastic Reviews. Thanks for tuning back in. It's been a minute. Hope you all had a great new year. I know I did, and I am excited for the New Year's resolution for this channel. Man, pesto tastes so good. Um, today, I, you know, it's it's 2023. Uh, I didn't think the channel would survive this long, to be honest with you. I thought we would have died out long ago with Flick Pick, but Bruh. here we are now. Um, and I figured, you know what, to kick off this new year and a New Year's resolution I've had for this channel is uh, to talk about you know, more movies on the on the channel, basically. I mean, the podcast, you know, Inside the Sequel, which I highly recommend you check out, um, is still going. Uh, we got a lot of great episodes planned for this year. Um, but we're going to really focus on the YouTube channel just a little bit more. Uh, we got new camera equipment, new setup. Let me know if you want to see videos about these cool hot toys behind me. I'd like for this channel to uh, be about movie reviews, but also um, just doing top fives and maybe even doing, like, figure reviews now. If that's something that you'd like to see on this channel please drop a comment down below and like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button um, if you're new here today. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. I want to talk about my top 10 movies of 2022. And 2022 was a weird year for me. Um, I saw a lot of great stuff, whereas prior year, I don't think I really saw as much. Um, and this year had so many great movies. Honestly, 2022, I think, is going to go back, is going to go down as one of the better years of film, uh, just because there's so many good things that weren't just Marvel and wasn't just superhero. Granted, yeah, there were some great superhero movies, um, but there was just like, you know, we got Avatar 2, we got like big blockbusters and independent horror. Uh, it was just a really, really great year for, uh, you know, a lot of mixed things. So I'm going to go ahead and just go through my top 10 of the year and kind of why that they're there with one honorable mention. And that's going to go to Jackass Forever. Uh, Jackass Forever just misses the top 10. Um, I kind of dabbled with Jackass growing up. You know, I, did, I, I didn't think everything was super cool <laughs> on Jackass, but uh, I, I always knew who Johnny Knoxville was and Steve-O and Wee Man. I knew that stuff. They're iconic. Um, I think they really revolutionized TV and film um and mtv in general so like i gotta give them props for that and honestly jackass forever which i was surprised I, I i was very much annoyed that they were doing it when i saw the trailers in theaters i kept thinking who the hell's gonna go see a jackass movie in theaters and i did and i had one of the best times of the year watching that the opening with which was a godzilla opening um pulled my heartstrings um I, you know just seeing what uh, the the male appendage could do um, that I never even thought possible was an inspiration. I can't wait to try it myself at some point. Um, and it, yeah, I just like Jack Jackass just, just was the, such a great, great movie. Uh, and it just misses the top 10 for me, but let's go ahead and get into it, uh, with my number 10, which is marry me, marry me stars, Jennifer Lopez, um, Cuban, I believe, or Puerto Rican rapper Maluma, and uh, Owen Wilson. Wow, you know? So, Marry Me was a movie I didn't think I'd be interested in, uh, but when I went to go see it in theaters, I ended up having a great, like, a really great time with it. It's, like, very simplistic, um, and that's great. That's its biggest strength. Like, it's very much a simple plot of a guy, uh, Owen Wilson, who's a uh, teacher who ends up going to a concert with his daughter, um, Jennifer Lopez's, and um, she event accidentally or um, unintentionally marries him and they have to navigate um paparazzi and all that kind of lifestyle um i really like marry me it's a very easy watch movie it's a rom-com in the 2020s um you know some of it you suspend your dis your belief on but you know what i mean but i still think it's a very enjoyable movie i i, I think jennifer lopez has proved by now that if she's in a movie you should probably go watch it because you're going to you know, enjoy it. You're going to have some laughs. You're going to like the romance. Um, and you're going to get some great music as well. And this movie has a lot of it with Maluma. Um, I think he was great in this movie. Um, and, and I, you know, we talked about like bullet train, which was also a great movie, you know, that has like a uh, bad bunny in it and stuff. I like to see these Latino, um, um, musicians kind of step into film. I think that's really cool. Very much like Selena, um, with Jennifer Lopez. So hopefully we get to see, to see more of that. So that's number 10 for me. And then at number nine, 
um, which was a streamed film only. It didn't even come to theaters, and I was so hyped, and it delivered the goods. At number nine, I have Prey. Now, with Prey, I think that's a genius title to, to name another Predator film, and it's a prequel sequel, and I think it delivers it beautifully. Um, the big thing is about it is it, it's, it's about this uh, Native American um, woman who's trying to, you know, make her passage into adulthood, I believe, and a predator crash lands and she has to defend her tribe. And it's not like, a, you know, like the predator that Arnold fought or Danny Glover or anything like that. Um, it's more primitive, like it's fighting a wolf and a bear and like the Native American hunters have to like, um, you know, try to fend it off. Uh, it's just really, really great. Captivates a lot of like the early Western expansion era. And then like showing like the development and the evolution of Predator on film. I think it was awesome. I think it's really cool, especially since Predator is like very much embedded in tribalism, um, at least with the graphic novels I know. And, and then the, you know, the cast is mostly Native American in, can, in Canada, which is great for representation. And also at the same time, just the authenticity of it all, I think was amazing. Um, th the movie was marketed very well. And I mean, I, Hulu probably made a shit ton of money with that. Um, so yeah, Prey at number nine, one of the better movies of this year for me. And then kicking it off next is... This is one of the late movies I saw in the year. Um, I saw it when I went on vacation with my partner, Charlie. And uh, whew, man, what a odd, odd experience. It was directed by Luca Guadagnino, who the last movie I saw him in theaters do was Suspiria, which, I mean, that's a movie I'm you know, I don't feel bad about bashing that Suspirio was not that good at all. I think if you like that movie, you're just trying to be different. Um, and you know, I, and I saw call me by your name and I was like, you know, he needs to do more of that. If Luca Guardino is going to do movies, he needs to hold on to that kind of thing, which is put Timothy Chalamet in your films and you're going to do great. I mean, I love to, I think Timothy Chalamet is doing so great in film. If he's in the movie, it's going to be great. Um, and you know what, he, he went back and he, he, I think he would have had army hammer, but because of the whole cannibalism thing, um, he probably didn't want to have him in here, which is weird. Cause he would have fit perfect for this movie for bones and all bones and all is such a weird, dramatic horror. Um, interesting coming of age love story that's embedded in horror as well. Um, Timothy Chalamet, Taylor Russell, um, and Mark Rylance. Um, Taylor Russell and Timothy Chalamet are these, and all three of them, I guess, are these people who are born with this, you know, like this, this insatiable appetite for flesh. <laughs> and so they're like vampires, but they're not like, you know, they can't go out at, you know, the sunlight or turn the bats or anything. They're just like cannibals, but it's not like they have like the, the want to, it's like a f physical urge to, and it's shot so well it's in 35 millimeter um it has great it has a great score you feel the suspense and it's it's kind of like a survival film as well because you don't they they're fighting this urge to kill people and eat them but at the same time they're coming of age and they have to survive in the 80s as well during reaganomics <laughs> which is a horror in itself and then there's other people who know about them because they can smell each other so some people can smell who's a eater is what they call each other terrifying stuff beautifully written heartbreaking as hell and just terrifying like in suspense the whole time i was in theaters um watching this movie and i was like wow i gotta give it to Gua Gua you know he really knocked this movie out of the park um but yeah bones and all i definitely recommend seeing it i'd love to see this movie at the oscars because it's so fucking amazing and weird at the same time so yeah that's my number eight at number seven which is a movie that I've been, I was hotly protesting in terms of like excitement for, but then it kind of turned out to be one of my favorite movies of the year and it delivered in all the hype and all the glory. And that is James Cameron's Avatar 2, The Way of Water. My God, Avatar, I rewatched the first Avatar and I was dumbfounded. I was like, oh my God, I was such an idiot. I can't believe I didn't like, like, you know, gas this movie up more in the past until the sequel's about to come out. But my God, rewatching Avatar was an amazing experience. And then seeing this movie again and the new one in IMAX and revisiting Pandora again, it was awesome. I think Avatar 2 heightens the first movie. I'm, ex I'm, I'm all on board for this saga. Just give James Cameron 
you know, an endless check of making how whatever he wants to do with this movie. I think it was beautifully written. I think it it's a way better story, way better action. It has a lot more heart in the center of it all. Um, yeah, Avatar 2 is just phenomenal. And that three hours goes by quick. Um, so I'm really interested in the lore that this movie delivered as well and expanded on. Um, and I can't wait to see the third one, honestly. So yeah, Avatar Way of Water at number seven. And then we're going on just to number six. We're going to go with Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun Maverick takes the number six spot. And honestly, I was, again, like Avatar 2. I was like, why are we making a sequel to a, to a long past film? Um, and honestly, when I went to go see Top Gun Maverick, much like the rest of the world, Top Gun Maverick showed what it means to be in the movies and tom cruise has a chokehold on audiences it's just a, it is an amazing thing watching top gun maverick is like a crazy high it's like it's like you want to get more and it feels good and it looks good and yeah it's just like top gun maverick is just so goaded it, like it just it's gonna be one of the most e easily rewatched movies i think it's what people think fast and furious is but it just isn't I think Top Gun Maverick just elevates all of that. I think Tom Cruise is a nut when he's making movies. Um, just seeing the stuff I saw on screen was amazing and unbelievable. And the fact that it was in a Top Gun sequel in 2022, I was like, what the hell's going on? But I love it. Uh, Miles Teller kind of comes back um, to, to show that, you know, what he did in Whiplash was like a really great thing and we should continue to see and support his movies. Um, even though a lot of them are pretty crappy, <laughs> but Top Gun Maverick, definitely a thirst trap movie. Um, uh, and it, and it delivers the drama I, and, and, and it just so heartfelt too, with the stuff with Iceman and, and, and Maverick, I think is really great. And the stuff to pay an homage to Goose and all that other stuff, I think is really good. Um, so yeah, shout out Top Gun Maverick at number six. At number five. was a movie that I just could not believe went to theaters. I thought it was amazing. Um, I need to give that to X from Ty West. Now, I know Pearl also came out, and I did enjoy Pearl, but nothing's going to beat X for me. Um, it just feels like Toby Hooper and Wes Craven came back and decided to make a, a crazy art house type of film, um, and that's X. Shout out Ty West for being able to capture that and put it all on film. We get Jenna Ortega, um, and Mia Goth. Mia Goth, I think, is insanely talented after watching Pearl 2 just showing her range and then also being a writer as well while starring in these two movies all in the same calendar year is nuts I, I, I mean I I don't know who else would do that and I think with X and then with Pearl obviously Ty West is making homage making points to homage older films and maybe even criticizing them a little bit and adding that element to the horror of it all um and X you know you know, for all my cucks out there, I know it's a hard watch movie. Um, but also for all my Gator fan, Gator film fans and Creature Features, God X does deliver on that. Um, yeah, it's a it's about a porno, but like, let's not dance around it. Like, I mean, we all know what, what, what probably went on in the '70s, and a lot of great horror directors were, you know, getting their first gigs in the porn industry. So it's like it, it you know, it, it, the 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 dots add up. You know, everything checks out. Um, yeah, uh, and then Kid Cudi's in it too. Um, again, musicians in film. I think it's just a great like crossover. Lady Gaga proves that's it's a recipe for, for success. Um, and like, yeah, like let's keep it going. Except you know, maybe not put too many other people in, in in them. I'm mostly thinking like Harry Styles. Like, how many movies was he in this year? Like, I, I get it, he's an attractive guy, but let's calm it down a little bit. Also, Team Jason Sudeikis. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's uh, you know, I I think X is just a phenomenal movie, and I hope Ty West gets to do a third film to wrap up that trilogy. I think that and Terrifier Two were some of my favorite horror movie experiences in theaters. I could have put Terrifier Two just in the top ten because it was just a stack of the year, but. I'm going to give it an homage with X because that was a good-ass time. Number four. Okay, all of these movies are just like, I know my emotions when I watch them, and this is why they're in the top five. So number four, we're going to just go ahead. I can't believe I'm I'm, I'm putting it in there um, because I, I it's a director I've always kind of like jabbed at at times. I've liked his work, not completely loved all his work. But I love this movie. It's Robert Eggert's The Northman. The Northman, 
I literally left the theater sweating. I was so amped and soaked in like this bravado in this honestly the 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 skill of the camera and the the cinematography is really what killed me um and made me want to just bow down and like give my soul to any norse god that would have it um the northman was just phenomenal um alexander skarsgård puts us all to shame we need to get in the fucking gym and like get fucking shredded and fart and howl at the moon and then pillage like i think that's like all we need to do in life to be happy probably when i mean pillage i mean just like go to like a resale blu-ray shop and just get some blu-rays um but yeah the northman is just a it was a baptism under fire for me in terms of film it just rejuvenated that like yes these independent filmmakers need to get out of like the A24 and like get a bigger budget and show the world what they can do. Because I think a lot of people who went to go see the Northman liked it maybe didn't know what Robert Eggers did. So now they're going to go see his early works. Now let's go giving those people money to make bigger movies like Robert Eggers just has. Um, I think it's just all like a mix of like God of War and Gladiator and, and, and just mixing that all in with an A24 type of style with a big budget. And yeah, just, I could gush about the Northman all day long. I think the movie's amazing. Um, it's basically what they do in the movies. What anything is, is basically what essentially the boys do every Saturday night. I mean, I'm not going to be kidding around. Like that's basically what we do. We just don't look as good as Alexander Skarsgård. Um, but yeah, shout that out. All right. Top three. And then number three. Again, a movie that went straight to to Netflix. It was a streamed movie, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I'm tired of the hate of this movie. I think this movie is phenomenal. I think it's in everything a slasher film uh, um, lover wants in film. It's not the BS stuff that we get with Halloween in that franchise, and and yeah, I don't even know what other horror franchise. Like basically, like we're not getting movies like Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022, and that's a problem if you're in the horror community. I think we need these movies to come out more often to remind us what the genre is. It's about get, kicking back and having a good ass time with iconic horror movie characters just doing what they do or what we think they're doing is just mowing down people. The thing about Matt, a Chainsaw Massacre 2022 that's great is that it's a legacy sequel, which I kind of like despise. I, I find it very annoying when a lot of older franchises do like these legacy sequels and get these old cast members. And I remember with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I was part of the discourse. I thought it was terrible. I was like, oh, whatever. It's going to be bad. But... Honestly, it was so incredibly well-written as Elsie Fisher, which is smart. Two, it's well-written. It's not just mindless leather phase. It's like talking about some real deep stuff like gentrification and like what the world would in 2022 would deal with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre leather face killer while also having fun with it. It's not like fucking Scream 5 or that came out and had no business coming out and kind of ruining the continuity of the franchise and we're getting another one. We better fucking greenlight a Texas Chainsaw Massacre then because I had a way better time in that at home than paying for a fucking ticket to go watch that. So, yeah, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, just great time. And honestly, the bus scene um, it, 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 with everyone saying, easy, we're going to cancel you, bro. Chef's kiss. Like, you, you can't write it any better than that. And at number two, big boys right here. We're at number two. Um, I mean, he's literally me, basically the new leader of the Sigma movement. And you know what? That's fine. I'm cool with it too. Um, that's the Batman, the Batman, a three hour Batman movie in IMAX. I was so there. Something in the way is easily always on all easily making my playlist all the time now. Um, he's literally me. Like I, I like I, he's just, <sighs> he's him, you know, uh, I, Robert Pattinson as Batman is like the perfect casting to re, re like I mean, if you're gonna replace Ben Affleck it, it, it had to be really good um and Robert Pattinson did really fucking good uh I love the world I love the vibe I like how the lore of Batman just grows on the internet I think it just encapsulates a generation while also like bridging an older generation and I think Matt Reeves has something special and I just want to keep have him keep making these Batman or DC movies because I think, you know, after watching Black Adam, like we need Matt Reeves in the DC world. 
Um, I think just something to kind of like represent what Snyder did and then like do something, you know, more. I think Matt Reeves is the guy to do that. And I'd love to see more with the Batman. But yeah, just like Paul Dano, um, Zoe Kravitz, like it's just perfect castings, iconic moments for a movie that just came out this year. I could talk about the Batman all day, but I mean, it's easily, you know, one of the best movies of the year. I, I hope this is the superhero movie that maybe wins best picture if it's nominated. Seriously. Um, but yeah, that's all I'll say about the Batman. Um, and then at number one, I don't know why this movie didn't get enough buzz. To me, it's easily one of the best movies that come out this year. It's one of the best looking movies. It's one of the most entertaining movies. Um, and, you know, again, we talk about legacy sequels. It kind of like redoes something that's, you know, historic. And it's by one of the best directors working today. And that's Rob Zombie's The Munsters. The Munsters, um... I know it got some love and it got a lot of flack, but it came out to streaming before Blu-ray. And, you know, Rob Zombie still put out a disc, so shout that out. Um, it's on Netflix. You can stream it. If you're looking for anything to watch that's remotely October, Halloween, The Monsters is perfect. Like, it's, like, literally perfect. I don't, I've, I've watched this movie four times this year already, and it wasn't dull one time. I think... Um, Having um, Jeff Daniel Phillips play um, Herman Munster is one of the best casting choices you could ever make. Uh, Sherry Moon Zombie, perfect as always. I hate the gripes that people have about her and all the complaints on the Discord. She's perfect in this movie. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just perfect cast representing. I love the iconic, um, you know, looks of these characters. I didn't grow up watching the Munsters, but after watching this movie, I kind of want to watch the shows. But I know that they're probably not going to be as good as the movie anyway, so... I, I just keep rewatching the movie. It, it mixes like old, like universal monsters and like, you know, iconic things like that with like hammer. And it, yeah, I just love it. And it's just such a simple story and it just ends abruptly like that. And I love it. It's perfect. Um, so you know, Rob Zombie doing a PG movie works oddly very well. Um, he's just like my comfort director and the fact that he made a movie in 2022 and it's a year that I thought was very strong for film and he's number one in it. Easy choice. So there you go. That's my top 10 of 2022. What was your top 10 of 2022? Or do we have any similar spots? Share your um, your top 10s down below. Um, let me know what you think of the new format, the new setup. I moved to Chicago, so that's why we have to change the location. If you're in the area, let me know. Email the show um, at hertastic dot reviews at gmail.com or email the show um for the podcast at in, at sequel at gmail.com other than that if you enjoy this video drop a like hit that subscribe button and remember if you're not giving me your top 10 of 2022 in the comments do you really care about cinema other than that i'll see you next time uh hey it's chris again uh remember don't forget to check out inside the sequel follow us on twitter follow me on twitter to see all my crazy hot takes and rankings uh but yeah we have great episodes coming this month, so check out the channel and the podcast. See ya.